Hi, and welcome. This is the last dedicated video for Cross 14. We're closing the book on this one, perhaps sooner than expected, but it's given us some crucial clues for what comes next. For those new here, I'm Ivan, and I'm working on establishing a pure Snow White guppy line. Everything starts with Gandalf, our original white male. My breeding program has three phases, the initial crosses, back crosses, and intercrosses. Within the intercrosses, I'm pursuing two main objectives, the stable Snow White line and a specific iridescent forehead trait. Cross 14 is all about the forehead trait, using Thorn, a male with a fantastic iridescent shine, and one of his sisters, both from Cross 8. Thorn had this incredible iridescent forehead, and I thought it would be a fantastic addition to my Snow White guppies. In the previous video, I talked about the genetics behind it, and why it's probably linked to the X chromosome. The real challenge was that Thorn was unique, the only male in my entire breeding program with this trait. To try and get more guppies with the iridescent forehead, I bred him to one of his sisters. My best case scenario was a 50% chance of the offspring inheriting it. But so far, none of the 18 males have shown it. Yeah, it's a bummer. Let's see what's going on. Checking out the tops of the males, none of them have that striking iridescent forehead like Thorn. A few have some increased iridescence, but it's mostly on the back half of their bodies. There's one male, let's call him C14AM, with a hint of an iridescence on his forehead, but it's very subtle compared to thorns. This confirms our suspicion. The iridescent forehead trait is likely X-linked. It's disappointing, but not entirely surprising. Thorn was a 1 in 15 male in his own brood so the chances of his sisters carrying the right genes were slim. Even if C14AM has the genes for the iridescent forehead, it's only a 9% distribution within his group of brothers. With more males still developing, I'm guessing that percentage will likely drop even lower, closer to Thorne's original odds. Okay, so what's the plan? The mother didn't have the necessary genes, but the cross 14 females should have a better chance since they inherited Thorne's X chromosomes. This X-linked inheritance also explains why the males didn't have the iridescent foreheads. So to boost our odds of offspring phenotypically expressing the trait, I'll do a back cross, reading Thorne with one of his daughters from this cross. The X-linked pattern got me thinking about cross 13. Remember, those females are also sisters to the mother of the cross 14 guppies. If the iridescent forehead trait is primarily determined by the X chromosome, there's a chance some of the cross 13 offspring inherited it. And sure enough, I've spotted a male with a hint of iridescence on his forehead. It's not as pronounced as thorns, but it's definitely there. This means that when I get to selecting guppies from cross 13 for a subsequent cross, I'll likely choose a female. One of the blonde males also has a tiny iridescent speck, but sadly, he has swimming problems and won't be used for breeding. I noticed it when he was a fry. You might wonder, why didn't I call him then? Well, I'm interested in the overall trait distribution. Even these imperfect guppies provide valuable information. He does express the Snow White phenotype, which helps me understand the parent's genetics. Plus, this blonde male suggests the iridescent forehead isn't limited to gray-based guppies. It's just a speck though, so it's not conclusive. Let's get back to cross 14. I'm going to back cross one of the females with thorn, but I need to choose the right one. This cross gave me some of the healthiest females I've seen. I'm taking advice from Brian Chin's videos on female selection. He mainly talks about delta tails, but his tips on head shape, peduncle, and chest are super helpful, even though I'm not aiming for delta tails. My females here have nice, straight heads, which is a good start. It's great to have so many healthy females, 
but my priority is keeping the Snow White phenotype strong. So, I'll be carefully examining the different traits in this cross and how they relate to the genes responsible for white coloration. Base body color, magenta, Storzbach, and European blau. Ideally, I'd like a pure Snow White female, but if that's not possible, I'll still choose the best option available and continue working on the iridescent forehead trait. Let's take a look at the offspring and their trait distribution. We got 18 males and 13 females from cross 14, which is a 58% male to 42% female ratio. There are three more juveniles that are still too young to determine their sex, but I could already tell their body color, so I'll factor them into the color distribution later. For now, let's focus on the males. I started by dividing the males into two groups based on body color, 12 blonde and 6 gray. Next, I checked for European blau, the absence of red pigmentation. Among the blonde males, five had red and two did not. These two were exactly the snow white males I'm looking for, so that's a good sign. The remaining five blonde males are still too young to really show their colors, so they're not included in the European blau calculations for now. Among the gray males, two had some red and two had none, and two were too young to determine. The next trait I usually look at is Storzbach, and I was pleasantly surprised to see that every single male in this cross expresses it. This is really encouraging. It shows that even while we were primarily working on the iridescent forehead, we've also been fixing some of the essential genes for the snow white coloration. That brings us to a total of just four different phenotypes among the males, which is quite a bit less than I anticipated. This limited variation suggests that at least one of the parents is likely homozygous for the dominant magenta gene, preventing other phenotypes from appearing. I'm particularly fond of the blonde males with the red tails. Their strong Storzbach expression makes them especially striking. Let's move on to the females. This is where I'll select the female for the back cross with thorn. There are 10 gray-based females and 3 blonde-based. Blonde is closer to the Snow White phenotype, so I'll choose from the three blonde females. One thing that's puzzling me is the lack of red pigmentation in the females. We had red-tailed males, so I expected some red-tailed females as well. I suspect the red will appear as they mature. I've noticed it often develops later in females. But it's still a bit strange. Next up is Storzbach. And just like the males, it appears that all the females express it as well. This is fantastic. It definitely makes choosing the female for the back cross easier. I'm leaning towards the largest of the blonde females for the job. So, here's a breakdown of the traits. We have a 53-47 split between gray and blonde body color. Looking at the males, there's a 64% to 36% ratio of red pigmentation to European blau. However, this number is based on a small sample size of males that have developed color, so it's not entirely accurate. The juveniles could still shift the balance, but I won't be raising them to that point. It's difficult to determine whether the mother is expressing European blau or just a carrier. The numbers are slightly skewed towards both parents being heterozygous, which I tend to believe because I occasionally see red on the mother's tail. This suggests that only a small portion of the females will show European blau, and a larger portion will probably develop red pigmentation as they mature. On a positive note, all the guppies appear to express Storzbach, which is excellent news. This means that both parents in the upcoming back cross are homozygous for Storzbach, so we could expect 100% Storzbach expression in the offspring, making predictions much easier. That concludes our look at the cross 14 phenotypes. It's encouraging to see less variation than in previous crosses. It means we're making progress towards a true breeding line. Another back cross with thorn will be crucial for securing the iridescent forehead trait, both genetically and visually. I'm planning to use this female, C14AF, for the back cross. She has many similarities to her mother, but should also carry the key genes for the iridescent forehead from her father, Thorn. Stay tuned for this cross. I'm expecting some great results. So, 
That's the end of the line for cross 14. This will be the last video update for this cross. While it's a bit disappointing that we didn't get as many guppies with Thorn's awesome forehead as I hoped, we did gather some really important information about the genetics involved. I'm now really eager to move on to the next back cross, which means cross 14 has served its purpose. I'll keep the C8B mother and the snow white males and place them into my mixed tank. The rest of the offspring will be sold locally. If you find this interesting, please consider subscribing. I have many other breeding projects in progress. In the next video, I'll be focusing on cross 11, which is the closest I've come to a true breeding Snow White line so far. The guppies from this cross are the ones I'll finally use to crossbreed with my half black red rose guppies. Here are some quick updates on my other crosses. Cross 13 is maturing nicely and has developed some interesting patterning on the tails of some of the males. Cross 15, between Thorn and a female from Cross 11, finally dropped Fry, but it looks like only two are able to swim properly. I've also started a new cross, a half black snow white male from Cross 9 and a female from Cross 11. This links Cross 9 to the other intercrosses and lets me study how the half black gene is inherited when it comes from the male side. I've covered a lot of ground in this video and some of the genetics of cross 14 might have been a bit fast paced. If you'd like a more detailed explanation of the parent's genetics, check out this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.